Hello, and thank you to the organizers for the opportunity to speak to you today. My name is Dylan Key, and I'm a postdoc at the National Solar Observatory in Maui, Hawaii. However, today I'm going to be talking to you about work I did on analytic turbulent pressure driven mass loss from red supergiants during my last postdoc at Caillou Leuven with the Caillou Leuven Maestro team. Uh, specifically, this work was published earlier this year, and so uh, feel free to refer to that or to email me with any questions you might have about my talk today. Jumping right in, mass loss is a very important property of red supergiants, as can be seen from the stellar evolution tracks computed and published by Monet et al. in 2015, where varying the mass loss on the red supergiant branch changes not only which stars uh, end their lives as red supergiants, but also the paths that they take to get there. However, mass loss rate in this phase is not a particularly well understood property, as you can see from these various empirical rates, uh, which differ from each other by um, orders of magnitude, and the fact that all of these are empirical rates, uh, no theoretical rates prior to our work exist. The reason that this uh, phase has such poorly understood mass loss is that there's this re region near the surface of the star where um, previously the force that has been driving the initiation of the wind is not very well understood. However, for our work, we employ turbulent pressure in this region, uh, as was suggested by, for instance, Gustafsson and Plez in 1992 and Jocelyn and Plez in 2007. Um, in order to implement turbulent pressure, we focus on the pressure gradient term in the conservation of momentum equation. And as is done in stellar atmosphere modeling, we replace it with a sum of a sound speed um, based pressure term and a turbulent speed based pressure term, um, which for notational ease moving forward, we refer to this combination as an effective uh, sound speed. <clears throat> Um, now, going back to the equations and plugging this in and rearranging a bit, we can get to these forms where we can see that from the first uh, equation that to get a mass loss, what we need is a density velocity at some given radius. And as is done in the um, solar Parker wind model, we choose to take the place where we know this uh, velocity to be this effective sound speed. And then we can analytically solve the isothermal equations to get uh, a radius and density at that same location. However, we can also numerically integrate the equations with the addition of a conservation of energy equation uh, to get a correction from isothermal to non-isothermal mass loss rates. Note, however, at this point that Free, turbulent velocity remains a free parameter in all of this and shows up in all of the equations that I'm showing here. To constrain the turbulent velocity for this theory, what we've done is turn to observations, and uh, specifically this set of observations compiled by Jocelyn and Plez 2007, and um, with the addition of uh, observations of Antares from Anaka et al. 2017. And this is a case where we have a uh, inferred gas mass loss rate and an observationally inferred turbulent velocity by taking these equations and determining what turbulent velocity is required to get back this mass loss rate, we get the final column, which is the turbulent velocity from theory, which is in its mean consistent with the turbulent velocity from observations um, to the uh, about two kilometer per second observational um, uh, uncertainty of the, the observations. So we take the mean of the turbulent velocity from theory, feed it back into those equations, and that gives us the first theoretical mass loss rates for red supergiants, which we plot here. Now to wrap up, I want to talk about a couple of implications of this theory. First, uh, since the turbulent pressure is uh, thought, uh, we, we believe this is in, um, initiated by hydrogen recombination, turbulent pressure driven mass loss is not strongly dependent on metallicity. And so unlike the majority of the empirical rates um, with a few notable exceptions, um, we would predict a more dominant role of red supergiant mass loss in low metallicity environments. Additionally, uh, turbulent pressure driven mass loss scales a bit more deeply with luminosity 
than many of the current empirical rates. Again, predicting a more dominant role of red supergiant mass loss for higher mass and more evolved red supergiants. Finally, turbulent pressure-driven mass loss scales more steeply with mass than many of the uh, empirical rates thus far, which would reinforce that uh, more evolved red supergiants would have a more dominant um, mass loss process as the star loses mass and mass loss continues to increase. Um, with that, I'll leave you with my uh, implications here. And again, feel free to email me or refer to the paper with any questions you might have. Thank you.